Fear Not America, this is Pastor Elliot Cook here with you yet again today to remind you of God's love, His mercy, His grace towards you. Please, dear Christian, do not fret, do not worry, do not fear. God is with us. And if He is with us, who can stand against us, people? Uh, you know, we've been in this series on Revelation. And today we find ourselves in another chapter. And it starts in chapter 8, verse 1. I'll read the first five verses of this chapter uh, today as we consider what the Lord has for us so that we can grow and mature in our, in our understanding and in our relationship with him. Revelation 8.1 When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. This is the calm before the storm. Okay, but the seals, we're finally getting to some really interesting stuff. The first seal is broken, and there's silence, okay, for about a half an hour, 30 minutes. It's almost like a pause. Uh, there's been so much going on, and more is to come, but we've got to take a break. We've got to have a time out. We've got to reflect. It's almost as if a musical score is being played. And we've come to the end of a measure, and there's a rest there. And the orchestra is preparing, and mentally we are, and we're going on to the next verse that's going to be told at this point. John is not necessarily sharing chronologically as he saw it. He's interpreting what he sees. He's not necessarily being shown things in chronological order. If you try to take this revelation of John and put it out chronologically, you have some problems doing that. So it seems that there's some replay being done, some repeat of refrains or verses that are worded differently, and there are bridges and new movements, and there are additions to the musical score, the story that is being created. When you think of Revelation, think of a musical piece being played by an orchestra instead of a game being played on a field or a strategy for battle. Okay? Perhaps you'll have a better understanding of the artistry, of the creativity involved in this revelation that Jesus gives to John. Anyway, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. How long is a half an hour in heaven? I don't know. It's but a breath. Or it's an eternity. But there's a pause. I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Okay, so the seven angels get seven trumpets. What are the trumpets? They're a way to get your attention, people. They're for making an announcement. You trumpet before something important happens. There are seven things being announced here, or going to be announced very shortly. They're not all announced at the same time. It's an unfolding of seven things that God wants to do, to accomplish, to reveal. And I saw the seven angels, yes. Um, verse 3, another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar the altar of sacrifice. Uh, under the altar are the saints uh, and their prayers continually going up. Uh, this whole picture of this angel with this censer is, is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Let's, let's continue on um, in the middle of verse 3. Uh, he was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all of God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. In this censer that he has 
is incense and prayers mixed with it. Our prayers are like incense, people. Get this. When you pray a prayer, it comes up before God. It rises up and wafts in the presence of God, and he smells it. He feels it on his skin. He bathes in it. Your prayers, eternal, everyone's prayers, Adam, Eve, Moses, Elijah, Jesus, Paul, Peter, Augustine, Mother Teresa, Billy Graham, everyone's prayers are represented here. Now, why would you hold on to a prayer that was answered millennia ago? Why would it be in the censors? Isn't this just the prayers about the end times? No, not necessarily. This is probably all prayers all time. You see, God heard your prayer back in the past when you first prayed it. He still hears it today, and he's going to hear it tomorrow. He's answered it, perhaps. He hasn't answered it yet. He will be looking back on it and making sure that it works into his plan, his unveiling for his people. This incense continues and lingers in his presence, and he will not forget your prayers. They're important to him. He cares for you. He's going to answer your prayers. He's going to do something marvelous with your prayers. And we're going to see that in verse 4. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of God's people went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar. And he hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashings of lightning, and an earthquake. Now, we know from the previous uh, section that we studied that an earthquake is a shaking. It's not necessarily a literal earthquake, although a literal earthquake may be happening on the earth because of the prayers of the saints. But God is answering the prayers of people of from all time, and he is doing a marvelous thing in this moment and everything's being shaken the old ways and the new the time before the tribulation and now the time of the tribulation and the Antichrist and what he's doing and what he's setting up it's all gonna start to shake it's all gonna start to crumble as if it's been built on the sand because it is And God is using your prayers to accomplish this. See, every prayer is an act of faith. And faith is rewarded. Faith is a powerful, powerful element in your life to be heard, to have your prayer answered, but also in God's mighty hand to use as what? A weapon? It almost sounds like it. Uh, it's mixed with fire from the altar, your prayers and the incense, and it's hurled on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Something significant is happening because you're praying. Do not think that God does not hear. You know, my prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. Well, it may seem like that at times. And maybe your prayers are ineffective because of sin in your life. And you need to clear out the sin and repent and repray that prayer now in a right relationship with God. So that the ceilings, uh, that which interrupts your relationship with Jesus, the heavens are parted for you. Ah! And you're in the presence of God, right? And he hears your prayers. He's going to hear your prayers. He can't not hear your prayers. You're his child. He loves you. He's taking careful inventory. He's putting them all in the censer. And the angel's going to come and, and present them to the Father. And he is going to answer your prayers. And he's going to use your prayers in mighty ways. At this point in time, that's being talked about in this passage, uh, 
during the seventh seal being broken? Yes, but also now, just as he did in your grandparents' generation, and in Jesus' generation, and in David's generation, and in so on and so forth, Abraham, all the way back to Adam. Prayers are a powerful, powerful thing. They are a tool that God gives to us so that we can have a relationship to him and see his mighty hand move on our behalf. There are plenty of people still today who have not yet bent their knee and prayed for an end to this coronavirus. And I truly believe that if every knee should bow and every tongue asked for an end to this coronavirus, that it would end. Miraculously. But everyone has not. I truly believe that. I don't even know if God would work on behalf of the majority of the people. 51% of the world, if they prayed that prayer. It's hard enough to get 51% of the people in my church to pray that prayer. Because we sometimes lose sight and lose focus on the power that our prayers do have. We think, oh, the only thing I can do is pray for you. You know, I wish I could help you more. There is nothing, nothing in all the earth, in all the universe, that you can do more important than to pray. I don't know how else to say this to you. It's not getting somebody to pray for you. It's not praying to a saint or asking a saint to pray for you. It's you talking to God and exercising your faith just as I exercise my faith when I pray and all Christians praying. And together, this is a corporate prayer, if you will. All the prayers of all mankind, all balled up into one and hurled at the earth. This is a significant thing. All your prayers are part of this and are accomplishing God's great and mighty plan. Even though he answered your prayer 10 years ago, 5 years ago, yesterday. You know, yes, he's doing all that, but he's also storing up our prayers. All those acts of faith as impetus to accomplish his will, to shake the foundations of that which is in the time of the tribulation. It's power. It's the power of God to pray to him and to see his his mighty hand move now, but also in the future. And this is why you need to be praying for your unsaved family and friends. Because it might be answered today, tomorrow, next week. It could be answered before the tribulation comes, but it can also be answered after you're taken and raptured from the earth, dear Christian. Your prayers can be answered in this moment, in this way, and the world will know and many will come to Christ during the tribulation because you exercise in faith your prayers. People, we've got to pray more. You know, why is it that prayer meeting is the least attended meeting in the church? I had a deacons meeting last night. I had more deacons at the deacons meeting than I did uh, having prayer warriors at the prayer meeting. Why is that? I don't know. Do people not think it's important? It's the most important thing that the church does. It's the most important thing you can do. Find a group of Christians that you can pray with on a regular basis. Covet with each other. This is how revivals start, by the way. I don't know if you're aware of it, but when groups of people gather and commit to pray together for one another, God hears in a special way and he pours out his spirit upon 
people and communities and things change profoundly. We need revival. We need prayer warriors. I invite you, you know, I often talk about Sunday at 10 a.m. how Jackson Street Baptist Church has a worship service and you can join us as we worship and praise God and hear more from his word as if that's the most important time that we get together. We have another meeting, people. We meet Wednesdays at 6.30 for our prayer meeting. I invite you to come and join us. I invite you to seek out a prayer meeting that you can be part of and partake in and share with others that your prayers together can be used by God in a mighty and powerful way to bring about the last great revival before the end. And the end is coming, people. I've been sharing it. Let me pray for our prayer lives this day. Let me pray for our the church, Christians worldwide, for our prayer efforts, that God would stoke the fires of our hearts and that we would earnestly, ardently come before the throne of grace in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do turn to you and we realize that you want to do uh, tremendous, mighty things. And oftentimes you are waiting for us to pray to you. Father, I pray that you would increase our faith and our understanding of what prayer is. And that we wouldn't view it as something trivial or small. That we would realize that it is the most important thing that we do in our day. And I pray that you would drive us before you individually and corporately. For something great happens when we're together in mass and agreeing with one another. And I pray that as Christians gather together that you would hear our prayers and answer them in mighty powerful ways. I feel your presence coming. I feel these end times so close, so near to us. And Father, I pray that the last great revival hasn't already happened, that there will be yet one more. But perhaps it's already happened, Father. But still you can uh, use us in mighty ways. Help us to pray and be prepared to be used of you, to share, to leave those breadcrumbs for those who will follow behind, those who will go through the tribulation, that they may find your son, Jesus, their Messiah, the one who died on the cross for their sins. I just pray, Father, that you would drive your people before your throne of grace and that corporately we would agree together and pray for each other. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May prayer be something more important to you than it's ever been before. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Fear not, America. God is with you. We'll see you tomorrow.